Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Estate Market Analysis from Morgan Hill, California for February of 2023. This is where we take some minutes out of the day to review the market, see where things have been, see where we are, and from all of that, see if we can't figure out where we might be going with the market. Uh, we've got some interesting numbers to cover, and we are just starting to creep up on data that's going to be very interesting compared to the same time last year. And by that, I mean March of last year was sort of the big pivotal time for changes in interest rates and buyer activity, that type of thing. So it'll be interesting to see in the coming months where we're at, but we're going to go ahead and cover this right now. And feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, if you have any issues or, or concerns of your own, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me at soldbyrobert.com. You can also find tools for my buyer and seller clients to get an instant evaluation of their home value or to start your home search wherever that might be right here in Silicon Valley. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. The first thing we always cover is the total number of active listings. And just think of this as the general inventory number. This is the number of homes sellers had to choose or buyers had to choose from. It's also a representation of the number of uh, competitors that sellers had out there in the market. Now, we're going to we're adding a number to the review this month because I think it's interesting to note this because it's a number that contradicts what we're seeing in the marketplace. But let's just start with the basics. So first, in Morgan Hill, in February of 2023, we had a total of 50 homes on the market, and that includes single family residential, condos, and townhomes. So all of your mainstream housing style units, only 50 units were available. Uh, last year, 29, so that's a 72% increase from the same time last year. In terms of history, you can see we're at a, a pretty low point uh, we obviously aren't as low as when things were really jumping last year. And you see what I mean about comparing last year to this year, where we saw a really big jump between March and April of inventory. We went from 36 homes on the market to 60. And that sort of defined the beginning where buyers slowed down. They stopped purchasing homes because interest rates were so high. And we actually peaked in June at 102. So if we sort of plug those numbers in and try to get a feel for it, if we look to December at January of last year, we can see things were relatively flat month to month. December was a little lower than January and January was a little higher than February. And we're seeing that same thing happen happen now in 2023. So given that, what should we expect to see? Well, if the numbers hold out, if the trends from last year hold out, we should see at least a little bit of an increase in total inventory between February and March in 2023. And the interesting thing I wanted to point out is the months of inventory. This representation, months of inventory here in the lower right-hand corner, is how many months of inventory we have, which is if you froze the total inventory right now and you froze the number of homes sold, how many months would it take to sell off those homes in inventory if the home sold number per month stayed the same? And it's at 2.5 months and that is extremely low. And if all we were looking at was the months of inventory number, we would assume that we were in a dramatic seller's market. There's really not a balanced market till you get to four or five months worth of inventory. And the reason why I point that out is this is, I think we sit on a very bizarre point here in the marketplace where under historically normal and, and you know, the interest rates we've had over the last 10 years have not been normal over the long term, right? The average interest rate on a home over the last 40 or 50 years has been somewhere around 10% or more. So this is an interesting number. If, if anything were to change in this marketplace, given how low the inventory is, we could see this turn around very quickly in terms of suddenly becoming a seller's market again because we just don't have a ton of homes on the market. Now, who knows? Maybe a response to an increase in buyer activity would inspire an awful lot of sellers to come back onto the market or consider selling. But this is an interesting place to be in where one number it's indicates to us that it should be a seller's market, but it isn't. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing we check, which is total new listings. This is the number of sellers who decided to put their home in the market in February of 2023. And for this year in February, we had 42 homes that got added to the inventory compared to last year's 64. That's a 34% drop from the same time last year. 
an interesting change because we, you know, we've never really seen things that have happened in past markets when markets hit certain levels in terms of how much homes were selling for that sellers typically jumped in and wanted to cash out and move forward. So that shows there's a lot of other elements that are influencing sellers in terms of not wanting to move. And one of the things I hear most is that, well, if I sell my house, I still have to buy one somewhere else at these elevated prices. Now that may change, that dynamic may change this year as we start to see home prices dropping since just a few months ago. If we look for a trend here, we can see that last year between December and February, we saw uh, from November to December, we saw a drop, which we saw this year. From December to January, we saw an increase, which we saw this year, and actually quite a bit more of an increase to, between December and January of 2022 and 2023 than the same time last year. But then what, here's the interesting thing to note. We had a very big jump from January of 2022 to February of 2022, where we nearly doubled the number of new listings added to the market. And this month in February, we did not when comparing it to the previous month. So a much more subdued entry into the market. February has become sort of a popular month for homes to get listed. And it's interesting that we have not seen the same level of interest as we did last year. But also keep in mind, we didn't have the interest rate challenges that we do now back in February of 2022. So my guess is that this overall freezing or, or chilling of the market that's been happening because of interest rates has affected buy sellers' interest in potentially putting things on the market in anticipation of buyers being out there because it's taking so much longer for homes to sell, which we'll see here in a moment. All right, so new homes sold, or not new homes, but just homes sold, is also down when compared to last year. We sold 20 homes in February of 2023 compared to 25 last year. Now, that's a relative wash given the size of the 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 uh, sample size of homes that happen, the transactions, the number of homes that get listed, given the relatively small number, that's not a huge statistical uh, blip. So I'd almost call that a wash at that level. But let's compare it to the same time last year. If we look at November of last year, November to December, an increase. We saw the same thing this year. December to January, a decrease. We saw that this year. January to February, we saw another decrease last year, but we didn't see that decrease this year. We actually saw the number of homes sold increase compared to January, and that bucks the trend of what we saw last year. Now that, again, may be a factor of this market where back at that time there weren't these challenges facing buyers in terms of high interest rates, but I thought that was an interesting thing to note, that we saw a jump in homes sold rather than a decline month to month compared to the same time last year. Uh, so some of that I think reflects, again, interest rates, right? We had a, a period of time where interest rates dropped a little bit there, and that sort of opened a window for buyers to come in. So I think that indicates we still have a challenge on our hands in terms of getting buyers into a position where they can feel comfortable uh, taking on the type of loans that are available. Uh, but uh, overall, I actually think that that's encouraging that we saw an elevated number of homes sold. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at homes pending uh, in February of 2023. Now, this represents the total number of homes that went into contract. And the reason I wanted to share this with you is because it's a leading indicator, right? This should give us an indicator of what can we expect to see in the next month? Because typically when you go pending, when an offer is accepted on a home, on the MLS, it, it gets put into pending or contingent. And then about 30 to 40 days later, it closes escrow. And what's interesting is we have had a big jump in pending sales in Morgan Hill in February of 2023. So let's go ahead and take a look at the comparison. Now, compared to the same time last year, things are down 37%, but we had 38 homes go off the market as pending in February compared to 60 last year. But let's take a look at the trends here. So from November to December last year, we saw a decrease. Same thing this year. December to January, we saw a decrease. January to February, we saw a dramatic increase last year. Now, not as dramatic as last year, but going from 19 to 60 a year ago, from 17 to 38 this year, again, not as, as much of a jump, but also very encouraging that some of these seasonal things that we've expected to see are happening. So we did see a very big jump. That's the largest number of homes that went pending since August of 2022. So that 
also indicates an elevated level of interest on the part of buyers. Uh, so I think that's good news. We could have expected this number to be a lot lower uh, given some of the challenges we're facing, but we aren't. So I, I would expect to see quite a few homes, a, a nice boost to homes sold in March of 2023 as a result of that activity. Now, average original list price, and like I've mentioned so many times before, original list price is what the home was listed for the very first day it went onto the market. So this is what sellers were calibrated to. And the reason why I report this number instead of just the list price when it sold, which we talk about in a minute, this is a way to kind of get inside the heads of sellers. What were their expectations when they listed the home? Comparing the same mindset to last year. It's up 7.1%. So compared to last year, sellers on average expected to get 7.1% more for their home than they did a year ago. We can see that there's quite a bit of fluctuation here. And again, this kind of fluctuation is normal with a small sample size like in a community like Morgan Hill. So in your head, you kind of want to try to figure out what the, the trend is when you're looking at data like this. But we did see an increase from last year, right? Over 7%. And in terms of what we're seeing on average, I think a general decline, it can be seen here at least over the last half year or so. Uh, and, and, but it's also relatively flat, which is a little discouraging because the number we're gonna look at in a second indicates it needs to be calibrated to the realities of our local market in order for things to work out right. All right, so let's go ahead and, and in, in terms of trying to estimate where the things might go for average list, original list price, I really don't see trends here that we can translate from last year to this year, particularly given the differences in the market from last year. Uh, but this is just a, a way of looking into what the mindset of sellers are. All right, let's go ahead and now look at average sales price. This, is, this one's quite a bit more relevant, I think, to what we're talking about. It's down nearly 14% from the same time last year. So last year at this time, in February of 2022, uh, homes were selling on average for $1,429,524. And the average home in Morgan Hill in February of 2023 sold for $1,232,219. So a substantial difference. Now, wrap that up with the number we just talked about where expectations on the part of sellers were over 7% above last year, but this year expectations should be almost 14% below last year. That indicates a big disconnect between what sellers are listing for and what the market will bear. Now, if we also just take a quick moment to, to sort of link up inventory with that in, in Morgan Hill, because of the difference between how many homes were listed versus how many were sold, in the month of February, we added 22 more homes to the inventory, right? So we're, we're continually doing that. We've been covering this for months and months, and every month we're adding more homes to the inventory. So it's clearly something needs to give, and in this current market, it's typically the price. That's what you have most direct control over. And but sellers in, in Morgan Hill continue to not be as calibrated to what the market will bear as other communities have demonstrated that they are. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next, percent of list price. Now, this is the number that gives us a little bit of insight into buyers' mindsets. When we're talking about percent of list price, we're talking about what the list price was at the time the home got accepted an offer. So this isn't the original list price, which we were talking about before. So when buyers were faced with this list price and made an offer that was then accepted, it was typically in February only 98.6% of that list price. So basically 1.4% below ask price. Again, as we've mentioned before, this indicates we are not seeing multiple offers. We are seeing buyers sort of in the driver's seat being able to offer below asking price. And in addition, we can see that it's a big drop from last year. Last year at this time, sellers were getting 106.8% of their list price, which basically indicates 6.8% above their list price. That's a net change of 8.2%. And as we're going to see here in a minute, the market really needs to adapt to this, which is going to result in more reduced prices. And we do cover how many homes in the Morgan Hill market have been reduced in the month of February, which we'll look at in a moment. What can we extract from this? Well, first, the trend is clear, a downward trend since March of 2022. And it's no coincidence that March of 2022 is where we see the peak as interest rates change so profoundly and then sort of redefine the market. We didn't see things drop to below 100% until July. Remember that we, you, if you locked in your right rate right, right at that last moment where you could lock in a rate for 30 days to 60 days, it depended on you know who your lender was, but we saw those all sell out over that period of time. 
And now we've seen things settle at a below 100% rate in terms of what folks are paying for their homes. All right, next, let's take a look at days on market. The trend here is also not too difficult to spot a profound increase. We have now reached a peak of 53 days in Morgan Hill. And this again, feeds the argument about pricing your home right and having to stay on the market longer and longer. It's 141% higher than it was at the same time last year. So last year, 22 days, and that was still a relatively fake number. Since we know back then, real estate agents were saying, we just listed this home, come take a look. We're not gonna consider any offers until usually anywhere from 10 days to 16 days after the listed date so that it can get two weekends of showings. And then they would tell, tell you a date and time that they would accept an offer. Anyone who's bought a home prior to March of last year knows uh, exactly how that was going. The trend has absolutely been going up. We've seen sort of a plateau in December and January, but then we broke right through 50. 30 days to me is sort of the magic number, simply because I think when sellers hit a month, when they can say, my house has been on the market for a month and they haven't had an offer or they haven't gotten sold, I think that is a moment when sellers start to consider the realities of, I may need to really drop the price on my home in order to get this property sold. And I'm just gonna say this here, this is a conversation that you need to have immediately with your real estate agent. Every day you wait, you are costing yourself money because if you price your home correct today and sell it, you're gonna make more by doing that today than doing that a month from now because prices are concurrently dropping. So don't chase a lower, a lower amount every single month until finally it's cost, cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. All right. Next on the hit list, let's take a look at those price reductions I talked about. Now we can see the number of homes with price reductions actually increased this month. It was 31.8% in February. In January, it was 30.4. And this, so that's a, basically a third of the inventory had to have a price reduction. Uh, that is a big deal. Um, that is an indicator. And I want this number to go down and it'll go down as we see homes entering the marketplace at a correct price for the current market. Uh, but Clearly in Morgan Hill, we're having a problem with that. That's not tending to happen. Uh, so hopefully we can get that squared away. But we're going to continue to see this as a trend. And, and the shame of it is, is that all these folks who had to reduce their prices now really should have done this long ago since the average days on market is now so high at 55. So let's take a minute to look a little bit more closely at reduced prices because it's 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 kind of shocking basically in some areas. Now, the good news is, is that since these price reductions occurred, some of these homes have actually sold. But let's go ahead and do a quick overview of just Morgan Hill's price reductions for February. And obviously there weren't that many of them, there were only six, but they are perfect examples of needing to have these discussions much, much earlier. So let's go ahead and cover it. The average price reduction in Morgan Hill was $156,945. The median, meaning that half of the price reductions were below this amount and half the price reductions were above this amount, was $52,550. The highest price reduction was $400,000 and the lowest price reduction was $15,100. So some substantial changes there. And, and the more substantial these changes, clearly the more out of alignment these original prices were. So we had one home that was, uh, let's see, what's the highest one? We had two that were right around $400,000 in their dropped price. One was a 1.35 million dropped to 950,000. Another one was 899,000 dropped to 499,000. So even at a home, which was clearly way below, and this was, this was residential land, so it, 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 that's clearly a huge price reduction, um, but it ended up, most of these ended up selling. Four of these six homes did end up selling after these price changes. But let's look at it a little bit more closely and see, how, well, how long were these homes on the market? Or, or how, these ones that had, because there's still two that have not sold as a result. Um, and one of them has the highest number of days on market. So the average days on market for these six homes was 276 days. And remember, this, this is only one of these was a piece of land, right? The rest of them were all single family residentials, townhomes or condominiums. Um, so 276 was the average. The median was 258, meaning half above, half below. The maximum was 449 days, uh, which is 
outrageous, and the minimum was 158 days. So these are all, and even if you take into account the how long it takes to get a lot sold in Morgan Hill, which is considerably longer, these numbers are all very much out of whack in terms of, of what we should be expecting. So the lesson to learn from this is if you change your price effectively, you can get sold immediately. The sad news is if these people had a, had a properly adjusted price in every one of these residential 158 days for that single family home, 256 days ago for that condominium, um, 209 days for that single wide uh, uh, mobile home. If these folks had all been priced correctly from day one, they would have made tens of thousands of dollars more than they did on this ending sale. So it, it's never been more important to have someone on your side that can price your home effectively. So make sure to choose wisely. If you decide this is something you would like to pursue uh, for yourself in terms of getting your home sold, I'd love to be someone you put on the list to consider. Just give me an opportunity to let you know what I can do for you. You can find me at soldbyrobert.com. Uh, I have some great tools up there for you if, want, if you want to start your home search. I also have some great tools for folks who want to get an instant home value analysis or a more accurate uh, competitive market analysis, which I can do for you uh, myself. All right, folks, you can also find my podcast on the website. You can also find the coffee and real estate live chat that happens once a month. And of course, there's tons of different market analysis videos available there as well. So feel free to find me there. I do appreciate you taking your valuable time and spending it with me. I do hope we've given you some great information here to work from. Thanks again for listening, and I'll talk to you all next time.